Hello, my name is Vincent Guito and um, we are going to speak about the Energy OS Scheduler. So it's uh, an important activity for us and for ARM system and I'm here with several of my colleagues which are working on different parts of so Energy OS Scheduler is a long stuff and this is split in several issues that, that have to be solved. So maybe we can start by, by the beginning for the low level and the CPU header. So one part is the consolidation of all the power management activity with the scheduler. So the first point and the first part is mainly the CPU idle, the idle state of the system. So maybe Daniel, you can speak about what are the main interests of consolidating the idle state with the scheduler? Yeah, from the scheduler, we need some information um, from CPU idle. And so today these subsystems are separated, so uh, from a design point of view it's, they are working like standalone systems and what we want is to have uh, this subsystem to communicate together and exchange information. So when the first prototype and uh, discussion with the power hour scheduler, um, the maintainers of the scheduler told us they want to see before the different these different subsystems to be to be integrated inside the scheduler. So I'm working on looking at how we can uh, integrate CPU idle with the scheduler. So it's some code reorganization and um, <clears throat> and try to improve some part and find the relevant information we can find CPU idle for the scheduler and from the scheduler for CPU idle. Yes, clearly we, we have found that there were duplicated information on both sides and at the same time took have also work on showing that the current CPU idle was not doing a so great job, probably because it's missing some information. Maybe you can speak about the, the activity you have done for the last, it was during the LPC? About the fact that uh, yeah, so the was not so good earlier in the last year, I did some analysis on how the current current menu governor is faring, and for some use cases, it can be really improved. Like I have some experimental uh, governors which are not published, but they, for example, some use cases go from 60% accuracy to 70% prediction accuracy, which is uh, pretty good. Um, right now, actually, I'm kind of between jobs. I was working on the idle, but in the future I will be actually working more with the CPU FREC governors and integrating CPU FREC decisions to the scheduler. But before I go, there might be this, we invented a new governor and we've decided to call it a gambling governor, so <laughs> stay tuned. Maybe, maybe your kernel will be gambling in the future. Okay, thanks. So it's a good transition. So the other part, the other PM framework that need to be consolidated is CPU frag. And so Mike, who is working, was work a lot with the, all the clock framework. I've now started to investigate how we can make CPU frag more integrated. Yes, in the scheduler. Maybe you can speak about that. Sure, sure. So um, the CPU freak integration with the scheduler is perfectly analogous to what Daniel was uh, discussing with the CPU idle integration to the scheduler. The idea being there that uh, CPU Freak, uh, as we know it today, is not coordinated very well with the scheduler. It operates on its own. Maybe it has some suboptimal decision making. Um, and so we can achieve some gains um, in uh, uh, power savings with uh, hopefully little to no performance regression by integrating uh, the CPU Freak decision making a bit more with the scheduler, uh, sharing data between the two of them, doing a sort of a um, uh, I don't know. What, I don't want to say on demand. That's confusing. But uh, sort of a, uh, a decision making, uh, event based decision making, instead of sort of an algorithm that just pulls and loops and loops and loops and is kind of stupid. Um, and uh, that's just getting started. There's a ton of work to be done there, uh, which is all very interesting. Uh, yeah. So. so another point that we need to, to work on is just to be sure that the topology of the system will be well described for the scheduler, just to be sure that you can look at the right level of information and just to be sure that you will compare the right CPU. So that's another stuff we are working on. Just be sure that we are able to fully describe the topology of the system in the scheduler. And then all this, let's say, low level or minimal consolidation will enable a more 
OWASP scheduler in which you can take a lot, a lot of more information. And so Martin is working on that, on this energy OWASP scheduler, and trying to prototype that. Maybe you can speak a bit more about that? Yeah, so the basic idea is that the current scheduler we have is not energy aware in any way. Um, and what we want is really the scheduler to know when it makes decisions about where to run a specific task, whether it will cost more or less energy than one CPU versus the other. So we want to make the scheduler energy aware by basically having a model that can help us guide decisions on where we put tasks. Um, it's not there today, so it's, it's something new that we're working on. And that will basically be tied in with everything that my colleagues here have been talking about, uh, because it's all there, all needs to be there to, to, to get the, the energy awareness throughout the whole system. Um, but on top of that, we already have a solution uh, which partners can use today um, while we're working on this uh, energy awareness um, on all these fronts. And my colleague Chris has, uh, has been working on that lately, so maybe you could talk to him about that. Yeah. Chris, maybe. So uh, I've been maintaining the uh, GTS patch set, which is available in the Laro's LSK. Um, it's, been, it's been around now for six months to a year. Um, it's stable, it's ready for products. It's in LSK, there's a separate topic branch available that you can take and you can just get the patches on their own. Um, one of the things we learned very quickly in that solution was if you're going to compare uh, task loads across CPUs, you need, to, you need to have them in a form which is actually comparable. But the scheduler as it stands normally uh, figures out task load on a per CPU basis. So if your CPU is uh, running at half of its normal speed, uh, a task only needs to do half as much work to generate full load as if it was at full speed. Um, and so one of the things I did in the GTS scheduler was to uh, make the task loads frequently invariant, uh, frequency invariant, which meant that um, we could compare them inside the uh, we could compare them inside the cluster they were in. Now, in order to complete the energy model and compare all the scenarios, we need to uh, f take this idea a step further in the energy aware scheduler and introduce architecture invariance as well so that we'll be able to directly compare task loads between uh, tasks running at low frequencies on small CPUs and tasks running at high frequencies on big CPUs and we'll be able to accurately predict what uh, energy consumption they'll have if they go to the other side. Yeah, so thank you everybody and so even if we have all a specific area on which we're working on. All this work is can't be split as independent or isolated activities. So we all all the job doing by one is influencing the other ones. That's why we need to to keep connected and then changing on what we're doing, what what issue we are facing, just to be sure that all the work will go in the same direction.